deliver his speech, I've been to the mountaintop. This was his last ever speech. He was assassinated the next day. Something is happening in Memphis. Something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up. And wherever they are assembled today, the cry is always the same. We want to be free. You know, several years ago, I was in New York City, autographing the first book that I had written. And while sitting there autographing books, a demented black woman came up. And the only question I heard from her was, are you Martin Luther King? And I was looking down writing, and I said, yes. And to the next minute, I felt something beating on my chest. Before I knew it, I had been stabbed by this demented woman. I was rushed to Harlem Hospital. It was a dark Saturday afternoon. And the blade had gone through, and the x-rays revealed that the tip of the blade was on the edge of my aorta, the main artery. And once that's punctured, you drown in your own blood. That's the end of you. It came out in the New York Times the next morning that if I had merely sneezed, I would have died. Well, after the operation, they allowed me to read some of the mail that came in, and from all over the states in the world, kind letters came in. I read a few, but one of them I will never forget. That letter came from a little girl, a young girl who was a student at the White Plains High School. And I looked at that letter, and I'll never forget it. It said simply, Dear Dr. King, I'm a ninth grade student at the White Plains High School. And she said, Well, it should not matter. I would like to mention that I am a white girl. And I read in a paper of your suffering and of your misfortune. And I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. And I'm simply writing to say that I'm so happy that you didn't sneeze. <laughs> and I want to say tonight, I want to say tonight that I too am happy that I didn't sneeze. Because if I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1960, when students all over the South started sitting in at lunch counters. And I knew that as they were sitting in, they were really standing up for the best in the American dream and taking us back to those great wells of democracy dug deep by the Founding Fathers in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1961, when we decided to take a ride for freedom and end segregation and interstate travel. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1962, when the Negroes of Albany, Georgia decided to straighten their backs up. And whenever men and women straighten their backs up, they are going somewhere. Because a man can't ride your back unless it's bent. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1963, when the black people of Birmingham, Alabama, aroused the conscience of a nation and brought into being the Civil Rights Bill. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have had a chance, later that year in August, to try to tell America about a dream that I had had. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been in Selma to see the, uh, to see the great movement there. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been in Memphis to see a community rally around his brothers and sisters who were suffering. I am so happy that I didn't sneeze. And they were telling me, now it doesn't matter now. I got into Memphis this morning, and some began to say the threats, or talk about the threats that were out. What would happen to me from some of our sick white brothers? Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but I'm not concerned about that now, because I've been to the mountaintop, and I don't mind. Like anybody, I want to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain, and I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. I'm so happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord.